place to make gumbo. Now Rick gets to travel to some amazing places, but also I've been abroad this week to Valencia in Spain where I came across some incredible food and something I tried was a local pastry called Ensamada, which is my type of grub. It's I'm glad pastry, you said that. Yeah. ice and sugar and lard. <laughs> oh, perfect. With your figure, you would never tell that. Absolutely, would you? No. can't you tell. There you go. And it did have a vegetable in, which is part of your five a day, Ooh. so it was very good for you. Apparently. Okay, great. Um, which is this, which is pumpkin. Um, or the, you can use butternut squash. And over in uh, Ibiza. Oh, yeah. You've been in have... Ibiza, have you? Love Island. Yes, that's the one. I'll get yeah. onto it in a minute. But we've got <laughs> pumpkins or uh, little butternut squash. And I'm going to sugar this or candy it um, to make these pastries. Now, of course, in Spain, they love the pig. Um, and love everything about the pig, including the fat. And they use the fat to create these wonderful little ensamadas. And this is like a little homage to it, because uh, I watched a chef make it, and there was no way I was ever going to try and do that on a live show in front of three million people, was to pin out the dough, and he spread it over with lard. You could have wrapped yourself in it. It's like a big duvet of lard. <laughs> and then they take a little bit of pumpkin, roll it up, and then circle it into, like, a little catherine wheel, and then bake it. Right. Dust it with ice and sugar and eat it. Sorry, I'm still thinking about you... Covered in lard. <laughs> That's not an image I need in my head. Yeah. And pastry. Thank you very much. Right. And we take our nice little squash, and of course you can use pumpkin for this, and we roast it in the oven. But enough about the pumpkin. On about you. Congratulations on your new job. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Fantastic. I know. I must say thank you very much to Claudia Winkleman for having a ba another baby. Um, and <laughs> another one. <laughs> another baby. Well, she's, got, well, she's got two, so she'll be our third. Um, so I get to stand in on It Takes Two yeah. um, while she's off being a mum, which is brilliant. It's like it's the best job. Right up your street, that, as well. I know, right up my street. Because Strictly was um, where we, well, we kind of first met, didn't we, really? That's where we first met, across the dance floor, underneath the glitter ball. <laughs> you were wearing lycra. I think I you might have I been wasn't. wearing eyeliner as well, possibly a few sequins. I'll never forget Right, your anyway, tango. moving on to our <laughs> butternut squash. Yeah. Was it your tango? Well, you never forget what? Forget your tango. Yeah, what's wrong with my tango? No. Well, didn't they tell you you looked like a murderer or something? <laughs> I was afraid to say that. He's so harsh. It was very good tango, you and Camilla. It's a bit harsh. It's a bit harsh. <laughs> I did actually look like a murderer. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, right. You weigh the pumpkin. Sorry to change the subject. Yeah. Or the butternut squash, which that is, in new money, three hundred grams ish. Old money, fourteen ounces and a bit. No, I don't know. But you put two thirds sugar. Oh, that's a lot about, of sugar. About that, five hundred. There you go. Little squeeze of lemon. Goes in there. Squeeze of lemon. You put the entire lot in a blender. Wow. It's looking good so far, isn't it? Yeah, that is that's almost yeah. as much sugar as there is pumpkin. Yeah, exactly. I'm liking it a lot. <laughs> and then lid on. Do you still dance? Do you still do no. a few no, little moves? No, I haven't said that. No, no, I haven't said that. I did. Because I, I've been to a place where you met Norm. Your yeah. Your husband, of course. Ibiza. Oh, yes. I was that's there last we week. I know. You, so, what, do you like Ibiza? Do you spend much I've time I've never there? been to Ibiza in my life. This is the first time. Oh. And it's... It, for anybody, you could explain it. It's the only place in the world where you get to see a whole cross section of the world's population. <laughs> you do, you know actually. I mean? It takes all sorts. You get, you get the really Ibiza. hardcore people who are, you know, in that, uh, what's that place called? Space. San Antonio. Oh, San Antonio. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. you get that. Real, and then you get sort of people who have actually gone out there and just got off the plane who actually look like this pumpkin in colour with a spray <laughs> tan. <laughs> they do, they look like the big cheesy what's it. <laughs> the bright orange. I never and, understand that people getting spray tan before they go on holiday. And then it you get a lot of people with corned beef legs. Oh, yeah. A lot of people that look like red-legged partridges. <laughs> and, but they're all dancing. But it's quite a cool place, isn't it, really? It is a great place. Did you eat all the food there? It's amazing. You get I was supposed to be food. interviewing you at this point. Oh, yeah, not sorry. You. <laughs> sorry. Right. Force of habit. Anyway, the producer's telling me in here, tell me what you're doing at the moment with your festivals. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> Thank you, James. Thank you, producer. Um, Yes, now I'm working for Sky Arts at the moment. We're doing uh, festivals. We did Isle of Wight. Next weekend, we're doing coverage of the Latitude Festival in Suffolk. Beautiful setting. Uh, yeah. We're going to be live on air Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, bringing you all the highlights. This is in um, HD and stuff like that. Yeah, in HD. And in, in 3D. No, Latitude's not in 3D. Festival will be in 3D. Um, that's but, the last one. Yeah, that's the last one, which is in September. Right. Uh, but next weekend, yeah, I'll be with Sean Keaveney from Six Music, one of the funniest man, uh, men around. And we've got all kinds. Kinds of kids. The great thing about Latitude is 
you get, you've got the music, so you've got the National and Suede and Paolo Nutini and lots of other people playing, uh, like La Love It. But you also have, there's a lot of, there's poetry. I'm going to have a go at performance poetry, which is a poetry? little... Poetry? Yeah, a little worrying for me, because I'm very right. much from the Pam Air school of poetry. Right. Uh, so that might be quite tricky. Sean is going to be doing some stand-up. Um, and we've got Steve Coogan coming on the show, we've got David Morrissey, because there are actors giving talks, and there's poetry, and there's ballet. So, uh, yeah, that's next week. Do you have any dance music? Because I'm feeling, I'm feeling, you know, because I went... <laughs> Have you fallen in love with dance music? <laughs> Were you on a podium, James Martin? I was there. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> with the 9,000 other people, are we all moving in the same direction? <laughs> you couldn't move. Oh. You couldn't do any of that. There wasn't the space. <laughs> Believe you me, I tried. Strange looks if you try to do a bit of that on the floor in Ibiza. If you were on a podium with James Martin in Ibiza, please take the photo. Yeah. Uh, did you have your shirt off? No. Oh, no, please. no. I, I was the only guy there with a jacket and a jumper on. <laughs> in Ibiza. That's a good look. Anyway, we're oh. only so up. How are you getting on with your parcels? I'm doing fine, I'm fine. There you go. Oh. So we're modelling these up into little sort of parcels, like that. And uh, so you get this, this is the stewed, basically you put it in, the, in a blender. Yeah. Blend it up for about sort of three or four minutes, and you end up with this sort of sugared pumpkin, which tastes oh. fantastic. Or, or, like I said, I'm using this squash. Now, they would use normal sort of pastry for this with lard. I'm using a little bit of phyllo pastry, but we roll this up like that. You look like you could have worked in a jumper shop doing that folding. Yeah, you well trained. <laughs> Fold it like that, and then you take the entire lot and then deep fat fry them. That's my favourite bit. Yeah, but this would okay. be my favourite bit if. Our home economist wasn't on a health kick, and she's got this fancy sort of low, low cholesterol oil stuff. I would use lard or dripping to fry it. <laughs> <in. laughs> that's what they use. Fantastic. So basically, Do you have a dripping pot at home that you put all your absolutely bits into? You don't get this figure without that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to mix this all together. But I mean, I first met you on Saturday mornings. Is not. Uh, it's normal for you because yeah. obviously you've got the Radio 2 that you're doing yeah. now. Yeah, Radio 2 from 6 till 8 every live Saturday and kicking. morning. And obviously in the old days, live and kicking. But this has kind of replaced live and kicking, hasn't it? You've got, you got the same things, you know, going on. Really, All you need is a couple of puppets. Because when your dad was doing it as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know. Back in the day. I remember my dad uh, standing in for Tommy Boyd on the Wide Awake Club and he had to interview Tears for Fears when they were at number one. And I just thought it was so cool. There was my dad with Tears for Fears. <laughs> He had no idea who they were. Uh, morning, Dad, <laughs> if, you, if you're watching. Ooh. Right, look at these. Mm. Right, and we can just great. put a little smidgen of that on there. Like that, oh, just to... Starving now. This, I'm, I'm just doing a bit of Nathan Outlaw stuff. You know, oh, just, there you go. Making yeah, sure it's nice. Fancy finishing yeah. touches. Eat with your eyes, James. Ice cream as well. Eyes, <laughs> look, that looks great. Look at this. Eat with your eyes. Ooh. Proper feast. Proper feast. And then we take this. Yummy. I feel there ought to be clubbing music going in the background. Because <laughs> <laughs> you you're back out there in. Are you back out there yeah, in August? Yeah, we go, we go every year for, t uh, for two weeks because Norm yeah. plays space. And can I tuck in? Space? Yeah. I've been to space. You've been to space? <laughs> no, I've been to space. I went to Pasha. Oh, you went to Pasha. Yeah, that's the posh one. <laughs> <laughs> you're really pretending you know, aren't you? I want that one beginning with A. <laughs> Amnesia. Amnesia. You've it was forgotten. dark. I couldn't see the sign on the top. <laughs> But that was quite yeah. good. And did you fall in love with it? Will you go back? I was. I'm there. Yeah. Big box, little box, cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, James, that is so Happy good. Happy with that? Oh. Fantastic. Right, what we'll we cooking with at the end of the show? Because oh. we're we'll facing food heaven. Fillet steak. The steak is pan fried with butter, <laughs> seasoned, and served with sauteed lobster, wilted spinach, and watercress. Finish off with mustard and tomato sauce and a squeeze of lemon. Oh, she could be facing food hell. Razor clams. The clams are in white wine, then chopped, put back in the shells, and topped with a mixture of breadcrumbs, mm. herbs, and cheese. Flashed under a hot grill and served with a tomato sauce vierge. Some of the viewers and the guys in the studio get sides always fake today. Nathan, what do you like the sound of? If that wasn't obvious. I love your jumper. What? How much do I like your jumper? Hannah in the matching oh, top. No. Yeah, no, heaven. Definitely. Heaven it is. Yeah. There you go. But you have to wait to the end of the show to see the final result. Right, it's time for a lesson in easy Indian food from Anjum Anand. Today, she's teaching a Scottish woman how to make a couple of Punjab style recipes to cook in front of an exhibition home full of people. Best of luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> This week I'm going to Edinburgh to meet Wendy Barry, a one-woman food phenomenon. She's a cookery teacher, a campaigner for the slow food movement and also director of the Scottish Food Guide. Do you ever cook Indian food? 
ever? Never. I've only met people that might give me a kind of Euro version. So I feel unsure because I would rather do it properly or not at all. Wendy demonstrates traditional Scottish recipes at festivals and events all over Scotland. But now she's going to be performing a show with a difference. The people that come and watch the demonstration today will be astounded when they realise what they're in for this morning. Her demonstrations are extremely popular, so she's about to put her reputation on the line. You always have a flutter, and I, I think it's always good to have butterflies. She's going to attempt to cook three Punjabi dishes from scratch in just one hour, with an audience of over 100 people watching. And in this kitchen, there's no place to hide. The first dish I'm going to show Wendy is a staple of Punjabi cuisine, tarka dal. Tarka simply means spices cooked in oil which is then added to the cooked dal or lentils. I'm going to simmer my lentils in around a litre of water for 40 minutes. Then I'm going to get Wendy to help me with the tarka by chopping an onion whilst I julienne 20 grams of fresh ginger. OK, so my tarka. Oil. I'm adding two teaspoons of cumin seeds to the hot oil. So you know the cumin is done because you can smell it. <laughs> oh, yes. Can you smell it? Yes. It's like quite nutty already. Yes. yes, it is. So we're going to go in with our onions. Lots and lots of julienne ginger, which is really delicious when you just get a bite in your mouth. Next, I'm adding two whole chilies. I'm surprised your chilies in there whole. So the seeds in the membrane yes. have the heat. So I always put my chilies in whole because they have a really fantastic yes. flavour. I don't want all the heat. And then later, if I think it needs a bit more spicing, I could put a bit of red chilli right. powder. So you're getting the subtlety without the strong heat? Yes, exactly. Okay. I'm getting Wendy to blend the tomatoes and the garlic. <laughs> we have fantastic tomatoes in Scotland. You get that wonderful scent you don't get from a, a shop-bought one, yeah. you know. Then I'm adding my pureed paste, turmeric and coriander powder. And garam masala. Once I've added the garam masala, I'm going to season to taste. So this is nearly done. What I'm going to ask you to do is just try a bit. OK. If you're OK with fingers. It looks pinky. Yeah. And if everything tastes harmonious. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. It's so the garlic's not raw, the tomatoes no. are not raw. So we can move on. That's lovely. I'm adding the tarka to the cooked lentils. Finally, some freshly chopped coriander. But essentially, that's done. My first ever Punjabi dish. It's gorgeous. Yeah? Yeah, it's lovely. The next dish I want to show Wendy, Punjabi chicken with spinach. First, I'm going to add black cardamom pods, bay leaves and cinnamon to the hot oil. The pan's quite hot, so I'm going to go straight in with my onions. The entire balance of this dish, or most Punjabi dishes, are these sweet onions. And then the tart tomatoes. So don't use plump tomatoes ever with Indian food because okay. you'll just get the sweet onions and the sweet tomatoes and right. there'll be no sourness. I'm actually going to throw in my chilies again. I just prick them with a knife to make sure they don't explode in my pan. Okay, so our onions are really beautifully browned and they smell delicious. It's time to put our chicken in. Next, I'm adding the pureed paste of tomatoes, garlic, and ginger, and then I'm going to put in my powdered spices. So a couple of teaspoons of the coriander powder and a teaspoon and a half of garam masala. Season with salt. Then I'm going to get Wendy to puree 450 grams of freshly washed spinach. In India, still today, people who can't afford appliances, they actually grind this by hand on yes. stone. And I've seen people do it and that's why this is kind of a special dish. Okay, so in goes my yoghurt. You know, I'm just standing here thinking, I'm enjoying myself too much, I need to concentrate more because I'm going to have to do all this. <laughs> uh, you will be fine. <laughs> you will be fine. So in it goes. I'm going to leave the dish to cook for around 10 to 12 minutes. 